It's my great honor and privilege to introduce to you uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama was born in Eastern Tibet in 1935. As a precocious two-year-old, the course of his life was changed forever when he was recognized as the reincarnation of the 13th Dalai Lama. He soon began his monastic education and was destined to become the leader of his people once he reached adulthood. But world events interrupted this plan and abruptly changed the course of his life. Several years ahead of schedule, due to the threat of the advancing communist army, he was enthroned as the spiritual and temporal leader of Tibet. He was only 16 years old. Barely 10 years later, when his efforts at appeasement had proven unsuccessful, he was forced to flee during an uprising by Tibetans against their communist oppressors. The year was 1959, the same year that the people of Hawaii were commemorating the birth of a new state, while others were still mourning the loss of their kingdom. While statehood was front page news in Hawaii, for weeks the rest of the world was gripped in suspense over the young Dalai Lama's fate. He and his party trekked across the world's most treacherous escape route, through the Himalayas, evading communist forces at every turn, desperate to reach the safety of India. That was a little more than 50 years ago, and the Dalai Lama has been a refugee ever since. During that time, he has remained steadfast in his commitment to nonviolence and a peaceful resolution with China based on tolerance and mutual respect. Today, he accepts that Tibet should remain a part of the People's Republic of China and asks for Tibetans only what the Chinese government has guaranteed in its own constitution, genuine autonomy over their own cultural, religious, educational, and administrative affairs. In 2011, at his own initiative and after architecting decades of democratic reforms, he officially devolved his political leadership to an elected body. This brought an historic end to the 369-year-old tradition of the Dalai Lamas holding dual responsibility over spiritual and temporal affairs. During his half-century in exile, the Dalai Lama has become a recognized world leader for peace and interreligious harmony. He has tirelessly traveled the world advocating the concept of universal responsibility, the notion that by virtue of our interconnectedness, we all share responsibility for each other, and the natural world. His efforts were recognized by the Nobel Committee in 1989. In awarding him the Nobel Peace Prize, the committee cited his consistent opposition to the use of violence, his philosophy of universal responsibility, and his work on international conflicts, human rights, and the environment. He has been recognized with nearly 100 other international awards and honors. In 2007, at the US Capitol, the Dalai Lama received the highest civilian award given by the United States, the Congressional Gold Medal. A Republican president joined a Democratic Congress and Republican minority leaders to speak at the ceremony. This was a rare moment of peace between Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> the Dalai Lama really can work miracles. Which brings us to the topic of today's talk, advancing peace through the power of aloha. If we want to advance peace, we have to know what peace is and where it comes from. Peace is not merely an absence of violence. It is a sense of thriving and harmony with each other and our environment. But our relations with one another sometimes hardly seem peaceful. Whether we're talking about nations, politicians, or even members of the same family, finding peace can seem like a constant struggle. But here in Hawaii, we are blessed with a precious gift from the native Hawaiian people, and that gift is the power of aloha. Aloha points the way towards what makes peace possible. Aloha means many things to many people, but its essence has been captured in chants authored by native Hawaiians for generations and continues to be practiced by so many of the people of Hawaii today. Aloha speaks to five key attitudes and qualities of great spiritual, and communal significance. Those qualities are kindness and warm-heartedness, unity, cooperation, and interdependence, joyfulness and seeing the good in others, humility and service to others, and patience and perseverance. 
those familiar with the Dalai Lama's message will immediately recognize his central themes. The spirit of aloha is not something we should take for granted. It is a precious gift that can bring all of us peace if we sincerely practice its intent every day. To be inspired in this practice of aloha, we need to look to one another for support and encouragement. By the example of his life, His Holiness the Dalai Lama inspires all of us to see that even in desperate circumstances, peace is always within our grasp. Your Holiness, for millions of people around the world, because of the life you have lived and who you are, you are the embodiment of compassion. For the people of Hawaii, you are the embodiment of aloha. Thank you for the honor of your presence and the gift of your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. No. 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 Sit. Please. No. No. Sit. I usually you see speak from here. Very good. Long time friend, governor. Uh, since many years, as we know, uh, and your wife, and the maid, and those who today, I think, uh, my long time some friends here, and then. Kongkasa, Kongminikasa, Piyakasa, ah, Piyak. Ah, I, I think since few years, he's a very close friend. And then, basically, uh, we all, actually, human brothers and sisters. Ah. Uh, We all same human being. Mentally, emotionally, physically, we are same. So whenever I give talk, people, I always feel I am just one of you. No differences. No barrier. This kind of this kind of sort of sort of uh, mental thinking, very helpful. Yeah. See, whenever I give some talk, without without note, no. without sort of preparation. One factor: I'm a lazy person. <laughs> 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 And another factor is, uh, whenever I meet people, I just feel something, my long-time friend. So no need some kind of uh, anxiety or these things. So it is immense help uh, to maintain calm mind, no anxiety. If I pay too much sorrow. Seriousness, then stress increasing. Uh, it actually suffer myself. <laughs> so you see, just to open, <laughs> whatever I feel, express. Whatever thoughts come here, express. No formality. Uh, just like intimate old friend, old friend, no. like that. So I usually used to call audience brother sisters. So now, of course, uh, I have been a few times here, but once again, opportunity come here. And this time, I think having opportunity meeting more people. And yesterday, some school 
children, and mainly, uh, I really uh, not only enjoy, but also I feel some sort of meaningful day. So now here, a public talk. Last number of people, you see, uh, come here. I'm very happy. Then my friend, you see, in his sort of introduction, he sort of quite sort of today, uh, clear explanation about meaning of Kaza. Aloha. Aloha. I don't know. <laughs> I just, this is just the sound repeat Aloha, Aloha, without knowing the meaning. <laughs> but now I learned <laughs> some sort of deeper meaning of Aloha. <laughs> so in the future, when I express, uh, when I so sound come from my mouth, aloha, it's just some understanding here. <laughs> so very helpful. Thank you. <laughs> so when I listening your explanation about the meaning of aloha, then I felt. Yes, express the word aloha very easy, but implement real meaning of aloha not easy. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, we all being, including animal, insects, birds, Everyone want happy life, do not want disturbances. That also basic right. Furthermore, I think all living things have every right to survive. Plants, trees, uh, everyone which have life. No. Uh, Everyone, every, every species you see, have the right to survive. Then, those life with feeling of pains and pleasure, naturally, uh, every sort of life with that, that kind of experience, you see, want happiness, joyfulness do not want pain. Uh, so we human beings, one of them. So now important, uh, then, then by nature, by natural way. No, nature. Nature, naturally, instinctively way. No, instinctively. Instinctively, you see, we have the desire uh, to, to achieve happy life. I think now today, I put this way. Happiness, joyfulness is a result. Every result entirely depends on its own causes. Now here, uh, I think we human level, I think the Joyfulness, happiness as a result is cause entirely depend on one's own action. Action, three levels. Physical action, verbal action, mental, mental action. Here, mainly mental action is the key factor. So it's quite logical. Uh, in the physical world also, uh, when we uh, seriously looking some sort of benefit, some good thing, then we always make preparation for that, for that causes. No. For example, obviously, in order to achieve successful life, see, we at the beginning 
pay every attention about education or training. Uh, the training, education itself, not the goal, is causes of successful life. Good health, taking medicine or some vitamins, uh, uh, is causes uh, in order to achieve positive result. So, wrong cause, with wrong cause or condition, expect some good result is unrealistic. So, animal level, because of lack of intelligence, lack of knowledge, long-term interest, so often they made mistake. We human beings, because of this intelligence, uh, no matter what temporary sort of, sort of experiences, but we look forward long future, then make preparation for positive result or long-term long interest rate, like that. So education involved. I myself, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a lazy person. So when I carry study, I think I, my study start, I think, six, seven year old, till around 13, 12 or 13, I have no interest about study. <laughs> Only play <laughs> and running here and there. That's all. <laughs> the study is something compulsory. When time about my study, uh, one session morning, one session in afternoon. So when time about that time comes, uh, even sun also becoming more darker. <laughs> 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 that kind of feeling. <laughs> then next day, if you see when uh, next day on holiday, oh today, oh weather also is a much brighter. That kind of feeling. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, at that time, you see, no interest about study. Now, later I found these sort of uh, knowledge from study immense helpful. For my case, mainly uh, peace of mind. So, like that, you see, that today's peace of mind is supposed goal. In order to achieve that, uh, my approach must be realistic approach. In order to carry realistic approach, you have to know the reality. So yesterday I mentioned the very purpose of education is reduce the gap, appearances, and reality. Animals, I think they carries certain sort of limited sort of decision according to reality, according to the appearances. But we have this intelligence, so we are not relying on the appearances, but more further investigation, research. Then try to know the reality. Uh, with fuller picture of the reality, then adopt a method that method becoming realistic method. So through realistic method, you will gain satisfactory result. So that's nature law, no. law of causality. Uh, about three years ago, uh, one occasion in the state, one, one of the Indian state, where Bodhigaya, the Buddhist Mecca, I usually call Buddhist Mecca, uh, which exists. So the chief minister of that state, he constructed one Buddhist 
temple in his own capital. So he invited me uh, to participate in the open ceremony. So that ceremony, at that ceremony, you see, he expressed with Buddha's blessing. So his state rapidly be prosperous. Well, prosperous. Be prosperous. Oh, he, ex he expressed that way. Then my turn talk on, on that sort of occasion. <laughs> of course, I know the chief minister very well. So I told, if your sort of successful state of prosperity rapidly, no. through Buddha's blessing, then your state much earlier must be prosperous. Prosperity. Prosperity. Hello. No. Prosper prospered. Uh, prospered. Because Buddha's blessing, more than 2,000 years, already there. <laughs> uh, but you see, Buddha's blessing entirely depends on able chief minister's hand. <laughs> so that means the prosperous must come through action, not through prayer. So therefore, uh, So therefore, peaceful world or world peace must come through inner peace. Uh, and individual level also, in order to happy life, inner peace is very essential, including your healthy body. Recently, some of our sort of seminar or dialogue with scientists, our slogan is healthy mind, healthy body. So healthy body, very much linked with healthy mind. So too much disturbed mind, very difficult to maintain natural well-balance of body element. Too much stress, too much anxiety. That develop frustration, hopelessness, and then anger, hatred. So, the happy life, healthy body, very much linked with our mind, our emotion. Destructive emotion, uh, say, through sensory level, very limited, mainly through mental sort of thinking, no. such as anger, hatred, mainly come through mental sort of how's they? No, mental thinking. Uh, mental thinking. Uh, these angers, oh. One my uh, friend, one American scientist, about sort of a mental mental problem. I met a few years ago at Stockholm in Sweden. He told me at that time his age already eighty four, like that. He told me when we develop anger. The object which we feel angry, no. uh, that object appears very negative, very disturb, disturbed. No. Uh, actually, 90% of that sort of negativeness is mental project. He's a scientist, not Buddhist, sort of. Just, uh, no, not Buddhist. No. However, in Buddhist text, exactly it's the same view. All these negative sort of uh, mind uh, develop mainly mental projection. So therefore, through training of mind, try to develop proper mental attitude. 
uh, then that kind of mental projection will reduce. Any action based on mental projection is unrealistic. So any decision under strong emotion often become wrong because much emotion is actually biased view. Through that way, you can't see the reality, including your enemy or troublemaker. In case uh, you should, because you should, because that, take some countermeasure the, about the troublemaker side, right? No. Oh, we should take the calm mind, analyze, find out their weak, so points. weaker points, weak points. Then, <laughs> then take sort of the countermeasure. Then really effect, because no. hit the effectively. No. Uh, so, so the, any action uh, must be realistic action. So now the question. Uh, I think, I think those business people, I think knows, I think much better than me. Uh, recently, the global economic crisis. I asked some my friend, uh, out of my own curiosity. So I really is a little surprised. These people in, involved in money matter, I think including their dream, I think always thinking about money, 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 money. <laughs> so they are, must be expert about that. So how can, you see, they, how can be wrong about money matter from these experts? I really sort of liberal sort of, sort of, sort of amazing way, no, surprise. So then I ask some of these sort of people, what is wrong? Yeah. <laughs> then their answer, too much greed. So too much greed means unrealistic desire. Realistic desire is good. Unrealistic desire, one. And then, uh, too much speculation. Uh, that means, I think mainly, out of ignorance. Do not know the reality, just speculate. And lack of holistic view. So this economic crisis also ultimately related with our mind. Then these are the policies, different sort of countries. I think one example. Of course, Mr. Bush, I really love him. Very nice person. Really nice person. Uh, actually, that day, the Congress in Gold medal. A gold medal. Uh, the, from sitting room to the room where ceremony used to take place. So when we are going there, uh, Mr. Bush, uh, all, he always used to say, Kasota, uh, hold, hold my hand. Uh, and then also Nancy Pelosi, <laughs> as a speaker, <laughs> she also there. Yeah. So then the pre President Bush whispered me, they always create problems for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but today, today, we are very peaceful. <laughs> so, so I really, you see, Mr. Bush, really, you see, they, on human level, really nice person, very nice person. When I met, you see, after he became president, I met the first time. Uh, at the first time meeting, uh, see, as usual, just some cookies bring brought. Then I just, you see, express, oh, which is better? I express that way. Then president, oh, this is good. I, I already ate. This is very good. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, we immediately you see, become some kind of was a very close friend. So therefore, uh, I always say, I love him, I respect him. 
But that does not mean I fully agree all his policies. <laughs> so, so after this sort of Iraq crisis, uh, again, you see, one time you see meeting with him, I express, uh, I love you, but some of your policy is concerned, I have some reservation. <laughs> I told him, no, he nothing like that. <laughs> so my point is, uh, like the Iraq crisis, his motivation is very good to bring democracy, rule of law. Goal is very good. And motivation, mainly you see, thinking that way. So motivation is good, but method become unrealistic. So fail to achieve that noble goal, no. like that. So in any many level, any unrealistic sort of approach never bring satisfactory result. Now your question is, how to bring inner peace? Inner peace through wealth? No. Through simply healthy body? No. Through just knowledge about brain, no. brain development, no. Beautiful kasuta, kasuta, uh, I mean, good constitution or rule alone, no. So, then what is the real sort of kasuta, uh, basis of inner peace? Is warm heartedness. Once we develop warm heartedness, that means uh, consider all others just like myself want happiness, do not want suffering. And everyone has the right, just like me, to achieve happy life. So, with that kind of attitude, automatically develop respect. They are right. Uh, through that kind of mental attitude, fear, no basis. Right? No. Even sort of your neighbor, usually you have some kind of sort of suspicion that may bring, uh, that may develop no. uh, fear. Once you become closer, that family, the more closer feeling, anxiety reduce, distrust reduce, fear reduce. Our daily life, we can sort of examine our own sort of experiences. So more compassionate feeling towards other. That immense help to reduce fear. Because fear develops on the basis of distrust. Love there, compassion there, no longer distrust. Of course, this is not something, uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, realistic. So, the blind love, not that way. Utilize human intelligence, thorough examine. Exam examine, oh, examine. Uh, research, investigate, through that way, develop compassion. That's compassion combined with wisdom. So now, here, here I always used to make it clear, love, compassion, affection, there are two levels. One level, uh, biological factor, that is always, uh, what's it, biased, and always mixing with attachment. Attachment, a kind of emotion. That always, what's it, uh, I think, any, any, any view combined with attachment always become one-sided, biased. biased. However, 
that a biological factor of compassion take as a seed. Then human intelligence. Utilize human intelligence. Examine. For example, is it through our own experience, using through our common sense, and then, most important, scientific sort of findings. findings. Through that way, you can develop conviction. Warm heartedness is very sort of precious thing. It really brings inner peace. It really brings peaceful family, peaceful community. So therefore, and also it brings good health. So out of awareness of these things, then deliberately try to develop a kind of compassion that is unbiased, based on reason. So that kind of compassion is realistic compassion. If you ask, that kind of compassion must be based on religious faith. Yes, of course, all major religious tradition carry this message, this practice. But basically, uh, these practice not based, not depend on religious belief. Without religious belief, we can develop that kind of unbiased, infinite love, compassion, universal compassion. We can develop through education. I found one of my sort of friend, because uh, Richard Moore, oh, Richard, Richard Moore, Moore, Richard Moore, one uh, Northern Islander, no. very at young, very at very young age, I think about ten years old. Uh, he sort of his casualty. I mean, he uh, in then you see the uh, problems in Northern Ireland, the British soldier once sort of shot the rubber bullet and hit his sort of the foreface forehead, no. ah, forehead, no. forehead. Then instantly lost her, I mean his sights. sights. And of course faint. Then put in, when faint is it, uh, sort of no. disappear, no. memory comes. Yes. Then he already in the hospital. That very moment, uh, he felt, now I am no longer seeing my mother's face. Only that thought come, not anger, not hatred. So because of that kind of mental attitude, the rest of his life, very happy life, eventually he found a very good wife and a true daughter, very beautiful. I often was teasing him, you can't see your daughter's beautiful face. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that is a proof. No. Because even such sort of tragedy, he still remained calm mind not develop anger or frustration. As a result, his life very smooth. And he further sort of educated education. So, uh, I always describe him, my, kasa, my hero, my hero. Really wonderful. He, not religious minded. Of course, his mother, religious minded, Catholic sort of believer, but he himself, even at that age, he said, of course, he said, obviously, not much religious sort of belief. But as a human being, uh, he, he, can, also he developed that kind of mental attitude. Result, immense benefit, whole his life, not only himself, but his, all his families, very joyful, like that. Then later, he, I mean, he, Kazoda, uh, he developed, con he tried to find the British soldier who shot uh, on, on his face. Uh, later he found, then both of them become very unique close friend. 
wonderful. So we ordinary human being have that kind of ability uh, if circumstances is properly sort of uh, properly nurtured, uh, properly nurtured like that. So therefore, these uh, positive sort of uh, emotion or positive sort of mental attitude, are not at all uh, based on religious belief. No. So therefore, I usually call secular way, uh, secular sort of ethics. And we have approached that also secular way, approach these secular ethics without touching religion. That I think quite cru crucial uh, uh, among uh, our seven billion human beings. I think many of the people, many, many people, essentially non believer, not much care about religious teaching, even though. Some of them claim, I'm Christian, I'm Buddhist, I'm Hindu, I'm Jew. And their real life, their day life, not much bother. So we really need a universal way, a universal way to approach this universal value. If we rely on religious faith, no matter what sort of Kasoda, uh, yeah. marvelous sort of, no matter what is the marvelous religion, but never be universal. So we really need a universal way to approach these things. So that's only Kasoda, uh, secular way. Second. Then that, through education, through knowledge, through awareness, from kindergarten, up to university level, uh, we have to kind of find ways and means to make awareness these values. Then whenever they find some problems, some disagreement, usually a uh, sort of instinctive sort of response usually come, some disagreement come, how to solve, how to face this by force. Not through education, through awareness, not that way. Whenever we face some disagreement or some problems, they, we should develop some kind of way, automatically feel how to solve this through dialogue. So I usually used to call the 20th century a uh, wonderful century. However, that century becomes a century of bloodshed. If immense sort of bloodshed, Immense violence in past century really brought some of the good shape numbers. on this planet. Then we can justify that immense violence, but that's not the case, including Iraq crisis. All these crises due to negligence of previous, previous century. century. Very clear. So therefore, there's no other way except try to build this century or century of dialogue, century of peace. Peace through dialogue. Peace does not mean no longer any problem. Problem always there. I think this, uh, actually, it's a small area, this. So long, you see, so long this area active, some kind of problem always happen. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, uh, we must find uh, how to tackle when we face problem, not use force, but through talk, with respect, willing to listen others' interest, others' view, then try to compromise. That's the only way. So in order to carry that, you need two things. One, willpower, no matter how difficult it is. You must have willpower to talk, to dialogue. And then also, you see, you need wisdom to, to know the reality about others' interest and one's own interest and how much we can approach realistically. So combination, wisdom and willpower combined, I think we can develop this century 
can be century of peace, true century of dialogue. So therefore, mm, so sometimes in such field like you, small community, uh, still strong sort of heritage about sort of your past, as uh, they like essence of aloha. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I think it can be so useful or can so can make contribution, contribution regarding regarding sort of peaceful, uh, bigger human family. So think more these lines, and firstly. You should experiment in your own mind. Two ideas come, itself contradictory. Through your wisdom, synthesize the two sort of contradictory thought, actually becoming positive force. So that's also is a form of dialogue. Then within your family. Whenever you face some problems, try to find a solution through mutually because of agreeable no. way. Then that, I think, one of my friend, I think in Mexico or some some country, you see, they some some of their sort of family, family or families, some families, they are also sort of some kind of agreement. They create. Zone of peace uh, within their own or so the, the friends. So any sort of serious sort of quarrel should not take within that area. So such sort of, I think, good experiment. And then also education, uh, secular ethics through education. First one school. Some systematic sort of what's today lesson, right? No. Uh, educate the value of nonviolence. Then first adopt one school as an experiment. Then after five years, judge what positive effect or what something what what lacking. No. Experiment, examine. If something good already in Wisconsin area, some school already carried that as an experiment level, and the Emory University also is carrying that sort of what's the program. program. And then Stanford, Stanford University, no, not yet. Uh, also you see carrying with help of some scientists, some educationists, they are carrying this work. So why not here also? But then. If positive result, convincing sort of positive result there, then ten more school or hundred schools, you can you can expand that way. So that's the way to change the sort of way of thinking in our society. Through that way, we can build happy, peaceful society. So initiative must come from individual. It's quite clear. I mean, quite quite natural. When we think about world problem, immense, vast, then ability yourself very limited. Then you often feel some kind of helplessness. But then think more so, or so the more detail way. Yes, the problem which created by human being themselves. So answer must find from human being themselves, no other. So then human being means combination of individual. So initiative must start from individual. That's the only way. So should not feel helplessness. Make effort. At least create individual case inner peace. Then share. Uh, with more people, your friend, then eventually including your enemy, go like that. So that's the way to transform our world. Thank you. Some questions now.
Yes. Thank you. Now questions. We have questions for you gathered by the Hawaii Community Foundation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your, thank you for talking about individuals because we can control that part, right? <laughs> thank okay. you. Your Holiness, this is from Vanessa. Hmm? Her quest, Vanessa asked Vanessa. you this oh, question. Oh, yes. Her question is, I've struggled for so many years to find my inner peace and I practice what you teach in your book, An Open Heart but I find those around me do not want to have peace. How do I maintain my peace when I feel I need armor instead? Oh. Uh, my own case, I have plenty of excuse. <laughs> 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 I cannot practice of compassion because of a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> so, because there are a lot of problems, uh, you have to make effort. If you kasode, let, let yourself no. uh, kasode, influence, influence of no. the, the, the negative things, no. then uh, actually, uh, the, kasode, actually, you lost your real battle. No. Uh, you must sort of farm. If I'm my, my own case, no matter what sort of hostile environment, you see, thinking, uh, my own sort of belief, my own view, is the best to keep at least my own peace of mind. So my physical, about I think about three, three, four years ago. I had sort of surgery, remove the gallbladder, the stone, a lot of stone in gallbladder. Uh, sometimes I ask audience, those people who already used to remove because of the gallbladder, Show raise the hands. Hand. <laughs> Very few. <laughs> <laughs> Quite few. <laughs> so, sometimes when I ask this, you see many people you see raise hand. So then I feel I'm not alone. <laughs> many sort of, sort of companions there. Right? <laughs> so in any way, after that surgery, usually the experts uh, told me the kasa, uh, shimi. Uh, anesthesia. Oh, uh, that you see, within 15, 20 minutes we'll finish. So then, uh, awake. No, awake. Oh. but my case, complication. Firstly, you see the gallbladder lodged, I think, more than two times and ready to burst. No, almost ready to, yeah. Oh, burst. And also the pus. No. So, because of the com that complication, surgery took about more than two, two and a half hours. Then, uh, recover no. very quickly, very, very fastly yes. recover, within uh, four days. Uh, because of that, except you see that, that wound, otherwise you see fully recover. So at that time, doctor, the physician, you see, uh, expressed to me, oh, this young patient. And I told him, I'm not young. At that time, already, I think, 75. So then doctor said, said to me, he knows my age, but your physical condition looks like in six, in six days. No. So he described me as a young patient. Mm -hmm. So here, yeah, uh, then I, may, uh, so that I felt, oh, my mental state, emotional state, quite peaceful, quite sort of calm. I think that really, uh, so that made the difference. Uh, makes differences mm -hmm. like that. So therefore, uh, thinking this line, then develop 
full conviction, your own practice, your own belief, your own view, uh, then if you are remain firm, strong, then there is greater chance to influence others. If you remain weak, then difficult. So overall, we have to make some effort if we have some sort of because of the because of the view today's existence of the world a lot of problem a lot of injustice even democratic country uh, law abiding citizens law abiding no, citizens uh, still without self discipline without sort of moral principle then still a lot of problems. So we have to fight about this, not by force, but by promotion of moral ethics. So thinking this line, there are plenty of reasons be determination, determined. That's my answer. Thank you, Your Holiness. Yes. The second question is from a woman named Gina. She says, in the Hawaiian language, mihi is to repent, seek forgiveness, and break the bonds of resentment and mistrust between people. How does someone achieve forgiveness when not all parties are open to change? <laughs> Uh, forgiveness, forgetness, two different. Uh, if you really forget and accept what they've done, then no basis of forgiveness. Uh, so they. The uh, actual meaning of forgiveness, you accept they are wrongdoing, wrong done, rare. No, wrongdoing. Uh, however, because of that sort of reason, you keep anger. That should not, should, should not happen. No. So that's forgiveness. In spite of their wrongdoing, you still remain calm mind, compassionate mind towards them. Forgiveness does not mean you accept their wrong deeds. As I mentioned earlier, as far as wrong so action is concerned, sometimes you need appropriate countermeasure. Here, you see, we make distinction. Actor and action. Actor is concerned, forgiveness. No sort of anger no sort of negative feeling, ill feeling towards that person. But action is concerned, uh, you realize that's wrong, that's injustice. So in order to stop their wrong doing, unjust doing, for their own interest, appropriate countermeasure to stop that sort of wrong doing. So real sense of the forgiveness not keep negative feeling towards that troublemaker, like that. Thank you. Thank you, Your Holiness. <clears throat> this question is from Sunny. Sunny says, so many people feel fear, which you talked about, and distrust about the future. Hmm. What can each of us do every day to deepen our trust? Uh, fear, again, uh, the realistic fear, if mad dog come here, fear, it's realistic fear. Uh, uh, much better with fear uh, if you just relax, or then you may suffer, or, or compassion, compassion, compassion. 
Foolish. <laughs> uh, so the fear also, the realistic fear, unrealistic fear. Fear much depends on mental projection. No. When I was young, uh, during winter time, six months, about four or four, five months, uh, there's the, the, the such, such tradition. I, I live in Potala, summertime in Nopalinga. So in Potala, uh, and some Kazota, Tosa Shamdwa. Downstairs. Downstairs. There are some many dark rooms. <laughs> so when I passing through these dark rooms, uh, then also there is some sort of gossips. People say, oh, in this dark room, some ghost. Uh, ghost. Or, uh, this, dark, uh, this dark room, some another ghost. <laughs> so because of these sort of, sort of stories, so when I passing through these sort of dark, uh, dark area, I feel some kind of approaching, <laughs> some kind of sun, or something approaching me <laughs> like that. <laughs> so these are really unrealistic fear. <laughs> Uh, then also you see, uh, in human sort of, uh, as a human society, I think, I think, uh, if you firstly you yourself open your as the attitude, let them express same way. Right from the beginning. You try to close yourself, and then meantime, some ex some expect some positive things from others. No. That's an unrealistic approach. First, you yourself open. Let them sort of response same way. If their sort of response not that way, then, according to their circumstances, you have the f you have the sort of free hand no. freedom. How do you act? Sometimes in Europe or Europe or some, some different places, when you see passing through sort of crowds, usually I smile. I always smile. Sometimes you see the other, uh, the other side uh, looking quite seriously. Mm. Then sometimes I also respond seriously. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you have freedom. Firstly, you should sort of say, they create no. possibility, make sort of warm expression. I think that's important. You yourself, you see, a little bit suspect, suspicion, suspe susp suspicion, no, suspicious and aloof. Oh, then the other side also is sometimes, you see, uh, I think psychologically, if you always remain distance, then psychologically you also feel the others also similar attitude. I think that also makes differences. I That's my view. Yes. Uh, thank you for that answer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think we have time for one more question. Yes, is that yes, right? yes. One more. Okay. Here it is from Angela. How should indigenous people who have become strangers in their own land try to regain inner peace when surrounded by their oppressors. Mm. Again, I think, I think today my favorite word is realistic. Realistic. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this case also, I think Indigenous people have every right you see, to preserve your own sort of right, your own culture, these things. But at the same time, time change. We have to think about the today's reality. So accordingly, sometimes you have to act according to the reality. Uh, so as far as Tibetan issue is concerned, I usually call middle wave approach. That's something every level Middle way, not extreme, extreme, extreme way. Uh, practical, realistic, uh, middle, 
middle approach. That I think important. Then you think broadly, uh, the, those the people who come from different sort of culture background or different sort of area, these also basically human being. I think a number of sort of uh, uh, family, I think married with different sort of kasuta. Cultures, cultural uh, backgrounds. Uh, so that shows basically we are the same human being, isn't it? Uh, so they're thinking more broadly, more holistic way. I think today's world is such that, that, that that's the kasuta, uh, such sort of reality. So you see, just think yourself and prefer isolate. That's unrealistic, I feel. Now, next question. All right, next question. <laughs> Bonus. <laughs> uh -huh. Then this last question. This is from David. David says, Your Holiness, you're usually smiling in the photographs I see of you. Your smile makes me smile. Your smile suggests to me that life ultimately is a gift to be enjoyed as much as possible. However, I would like to know, are you always smiling even when not in public? <laughs> How happy can anyone yes. e expect to be? <laughs> if, if, so, say, say. When I, uh, when, when, when I, I'm in bathroom. <laughs> I'm still smiling. <laughs> what looks silly, isn't it? <laughs> and, and furthermore, in case, you see, sometimes it's difficult to come out. <laughs> so then, then you need, you need some kind of little pressure. <laughs> uh, so, no time smiling. Okay. <laughs> 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 Yes. That, we missed that part. What was that part? Oh? No, he was just, you know, I said, have you ever experienced that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. So just to finish David's question, he said, <laughs> I'm afraid. He, he said, how happy can anyone expect to be? How happy can anyone expect to be? Now here, I think uh, if uh, Serious answer, right? If no. need is serious answer, then the level of happiness also, you see, there are different levels. Uh, uh, some kind of happiness or joyfulness which common with animal, that's very limited, very low. We human beings, with this marvelous intelligence and ability to look holistic, and through that way, Bring inner peace. That's the higher level of peace or joyfulness. So here, you need a lot of mental work. Analyze the reality. Uh, then there are plenty of reasons to feel sad. But at the same time, plenty of reasons to feel proud, to feel happy. happy. Things are relative. Any event different angles or different aspects. So from one angle, look that event, you may get some uncomfortable. Same event, 
look from another angle, you may get more hope. That's the reality. Problem, in spite of our intelligence, in spite of our ability, we usually just look from one angle and very closely. You can't see the all aspect of the reality. We must look from distance and from all, all angles. Yeah. Huh? Not one di dimension, no. four dimensions. And from above, from below, six dimensions. Yeah. Through that way, you get clearer picture. For example, my own case, I lost my own country. A lot of destructions, a lot of sufferings, in spite of some, some development. However, that tragedy also some positive sort of, sort of the result. That tragedy opened Tibetan eyes. Uh, around six million Tibetan people. Before that, I think they closed their eye. Now open their eye. Good. Me personally, last 53 years, so life in exile in India. Best period, gaining more knowledge, more experience. That immense help to develop more experiences. And with that, because of the more realistic thinking, like that. Then also, I often see telling Tibetan who come from Tibet, occasionally they come, uh, pilgrims to India, uh, mainly coming to see me. So I always is meeting them. So a few, uh, some occasions I expressed today, entire Tibetan population actually four, ch five Chinese provinces, one autonomy, Tibetan autonomy region, then other four provinces, Kasa uh, Chuti, Yunnan province, uh, Sitran province, Gensu province, Qinghai province. All Tibetan in these different places uh, now really remarkable sort of feeling of unity there. So I told them, this unity brought by Chinese communists. <laughs> <laughs> so very, very sad event but brought some positive sort of result. So looking that way, uh, then if you look only s negative side, then sad, sad, sad. If you look from wider perspective, you can see some positive things. Then your sort of mental level, at least emotional level, you see much less sort of uh, distress. Uh, uh, distress, like that. So that's a, we humans' intelligence, the Kazota. Uh, that is the you know, quality of human intelligence. Oh. So everybody have that sort of ability, that capacity. You, you, you must utilize that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Please join me in thanking His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama. And thank Leslie Wilcox, our MC for today's event. Her Holiness, thank you. Okay. okay. He's not leaving yet. The greatest way we can honor the Dalai Lama is to live our lives with peace and compassion that he embodies. It is our hope please, that each of you is inspired stop, stop. by the experience today and will think about how you can be a pillar of peace in your own life. 
Your aloha is a gift to our family, to your friends, to Hawaii, and to the world. We are grateful to the Dalai Lama for coming to Hawaii to share his wisdom and help us launch the Pillar of Peace program. During his four-day visit that encompasses over 10 public and private events, the Dalai Lama will interact with nearly 20,000 Hawaii residents. And in addition, his messages from three of these events are reaching audience throughout the world through live stream webcasts. As part of our commitment to transparency, we share with you a summary of expenses and revenue related to the events during his visit. The Dalai Lama does not charge a speaking engagement fee and no aspect of his visit is being used to profit financially. Any funds raised are used to cover expenses only. We will now begin the closing ceremony starting with the hula by Halau Hula Ohana. And following the hula performance, gift presentations will be made to His Holiness on behalf of the people of Hawaii by Governor Neil Abercrombie, as well as Pierre and Pamela Midyar, who will be presenting him with a special pahu or drum. So please join me in welcoming Halau Hula Olana.
Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. It's a little heavy. <laughs> this is a paddle symbolizing our canoe. As you know, for the canoe to reach the shore, everyone must pull together. He doesn't have a mic, yeah. <laughs> Unaccustomed. <laughs> Unaccustomed as I am to public speaking. <laughs> Your Holiness, this is a gift from the people of Hawaii. This is a canoe paddle made of koa. As you have indicated during your time here and as you will when you visit the Hokulea, we in Hawaii know that in order for the canoe to reach the shore, everyone must pull together. Everyone must be united. And so we give to you this small symbol of aloha, this paddle that represents our canoe throughout the world, all pulling together towards a peaceful world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. No, it's okay. I think I still have a mic. Uh, Your Holiness, on behalf of Pillars of Peace, we are so grateful for your presence here with us, and we thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. This is a pahu. It is an ancient uh, Native Hawaiian symbol of uh, chiefly power, and we believe that your example is a powerful example of peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Put it on the table. Thank you. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you much. Thank you. I was seeing a close call about the Chinese. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So, it's now finished. finished. It's finished. There we go. I'll carry the drum. So, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Can you feel the love? His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, thank you. Thank you.